Hey there. It's March 3rd, Sunday. Time for day 63 of our Through the Bible in One Year. <clears throat> we're still in numbers, 20 and 21 today. And we're going to... And I tell you, these Israelites never stop complaining. My goodness. It's amazing any of them live through this. You know? So, let's begin. Arad destroyed. <clears throat> When the Canaanite, the king of, of Arad, who lived in Najib, I don't know where that is, heard that Israel was coming by way of Eth, Atherim, wow, he fought against Israel and took some of them captive. And Israel vowed a vow to the Lord and said, If you will indeed give this people into my hand, then I will devote their cities to destruction. What's this? Set apart as an offering to the Lord. And the Lord heeded the voice of Israel and gave over the Canaanites, and they devoted them to their cities and their cities to destruction. So the name of the place was called Horma, which means destruction. So they destroyed all of them. Well, <coughs> the brown serpent, now this is interesting. From Mount Hor they set out by way, of the, by way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way, and the people spoke out against God and Moses. Again, you think they would learn. Why well, have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? You never get tired of hearing that same thing. For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among them. Fiery serpents, fiery serpents. Hmm. Among the people, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he will take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten when he sees it shall live. So, so Moses made a bronze or copper serpent and set it on a pole. And if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. So he... Did not get rid of the snakes, you know. You're still going to get bitten, but it serves you right. But look at the snake and you'll live. <clears throat> now, there's a lot of, um, in the modern statues of Baphomet and Satan worshippers, there is a serpent, a bronze serpent on a pole. So people are thinking that um, the bronze serpent is is a devil thing. When it first happened, right here, okay, the devil steals things. The devil doesn't make up anything by himself, okay. And this is where the um, the caduceus come from, the symbol of the doctors that has the pole with the serpents on it. It came from this right here from Numbers 21, okay. It's not a Satan symbol, although Satan steals and uses things, okay. And that's where the bronze serpent on the pole came from. Okay. The Song of the Well. And the people of Israel set out and camped in Oboth. And they set out from Oboth and camped at Lai in the wilderness that is opposite Moab. Toward the sunrise. From there they set out and camped in the valley of Zered. From there they set out and camped on the other side of Arnon, which is in the wilderness that extends from the border of the Amorites. And for Aaron, and for Arnon is the border of Moab between Moab and the Amorites. Are you getting all this? Therefore, it is said that in the book of wars of the Lord, <clears throat> the book of wars of the Lord, we have in Supar in the valleys of Arnon and the slope of the valleys that extends to the seat of Ar that, and leads to the border of Moab. And from there, they continued to Beer. Beer, right? Which means well. Okay. That is the well of which the Lord said to Moses, Gather the people together that I may give them water. Then Israel sang this song, Spring up, O well. <laughs> sing to it. The well at the the well that the princes made, that, that the nobles of the people dug with a scepter and with their staffs. And he used to sing a song called Spring Up, O Well Within My Soul. Right. And from the wilderness they went to Matana, 
and from Atana to Naten to Nahaliel, right, and from Nahaliel, from Nahaliel to Bamoth, and from Bamoth to the valley lying in the region of Moab by the top of Pisgah that looks down on the desert. Wow. <clears throat> king Sihon defeated. Then Israel sent messengers to, to Sihon, king of the Amorites, saying, Let me pass through your land. We will not turn aside into field of vineyard. We will not drink the water of a well. We will go by the king's highway until we have passed through your territory. But Sihon will not allow Israel to pass through his territory. He gathered all his people together and went out against Israel to the wilderness and came to Jahaz and fought against Israel. And Israel defeated him with the edge of the sword and took possession of his land from the Arnon to the Jabbok as far as the Ammonites, for the border of the Ammonites was strong. And Israel took all these cities. And Israel settled in all the cities of the Amorites and Heshon and in all its villages, for Heshon was the city of Sehon, the king of the Amorites, who had fought against the former king of Moab and taken all his land out of out of his hand as far as the Arnon. Therefore the ballad singers say, there's another ballad, are you ready? Come to Heshbon, let it be built, let the city of Sihon be established for fire out from Heshbon, from the city of Sihon, it devoured our Moab and swallowed the heights of Arnon. Woe to you, O Moab, you are undone, O people of Kima, she, she, whatever that is. He has made his sons fugitives and his daughters captives to the Armite king Sihon, so we overthrew them. Heshon, as far as Debon, perished, and we laid waste as far as Nopa. Fire spread as far as Mabida. Mabida. Okay. Did you get that song? So we put it to music? No. <clears throat> Thus, King Og defeated. Thus Israel lived in the land of the Amorites, and Moses sent up, sent to spy out Jazer, and they captured its villages and dispossessed the Amorites who were there. Then they turned and went up by the way of Bashan, and Og, and Og, the king of Bashan, came out against them, he and all his people, to battle to battle at Idri, but the Lord said to Moses, Do not fear him, for I gave him into your hand and all his people in his land, and you shall do to him as you did to Sihon, king of the Amorites, who lived in Heshbon. So they defeated him and his sons and all his people, until he had no survivor left, and they possessed his land. Wow. <clears throat> Imagine going in, king and his army and his kingdom, and come back, and you kill every single person, every son, every king, everybody. Crazy, huh? Balak summons Balaam. Oh, well, there you go. Then the people of Israel set out and camped in the plains of Moab beyond Jordan and at Jericho. And Balak, the son of Zippor, saw that Israel saw what it, all that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was in a great dread of the people because there were many. Moab was overcome with fear of the people of Israel. And Moab said to the elders of Midian, this horde will now lick up all that is around us as the ox licks up the grass of the field. So Balak, son of Zippor, who was who was king of Moab at the time, sent messengers to Balaam, the son of Boar of Pethar, which is near the river, in the land of the people of Emma. I don't know any of these places, okay? <clears throat> to call him, saying, Behold, a people has come out of Egypt. They cover the face of the earth, and they are dwelling opposite me. Come now, curse this people from me, since they are too mighty for me. Perhaps I shall be able to defeat them and drive them from the land. For I know that he whom you bless is blessed, and he whom you curse is cursed. Hmm. So the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the fees for divination of their land. And they came to Balaam and gave him Balak's message and, and said to them, Lodger tonight, now will bring back word to you as the Lord speaks to me. So the princes of Moab stayed up with Balaam, and and God came to Balaam and said, Who are these men with you? And Balaam said to God, Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, has sent, has sent to me, saying, Behold, people has come out of Egypt, and it covers the face of the earth. Now come and curse them, and perhaps I will be able to fight against them and to drive them out. They said all this already. God said to Balaam, You shall not go with him. You shall not curse the people, for they are blessed. So Balaam rose in the morning and said to the princess of Balaam, Go to your own land, for the Lord has refused to let me go with you. So the princes of Moab rose and went back, went to Balak, and said, Balaam refuses to come with us. Once again, Balak sent princes more, more in number and more honorable than these. And they came to Balaam and said to him, 
Here we go all over again. That says Balak, the son of Zippor, let nothing hinder you coming from me, I for surely do for I will surely do you great honor. Whatever you say to me, I, I will do. Come, curse his people from me. But Balaam answered and said to the servants of Balak, Though Balak were to give me his house full of silver and gold, I, I cannot go beyond the command of the Lord my God to do less or more. So you too, please stay here tonight, that I may know what more the Lord will say to me. And God came to Balaam at night and said to him, If the men have come to call you, rise, go with them, but only do what I tell you. So Balaam rose in the morning and saddled his donkey and went with the princes of Moab. Hmm. Balaam's donkey and the angel. <clears throat> but God's anger was kindled because, because he went. And the angel of the Lord took his stand in the way as his adversary. What? It's told him to go with him, right? I'm going back up here. Balaam answered here. So the Balaam gave you the house of play tonight and God came to Balaam at night and said to him if the men have come to call you rise go with them but only do what I tell you okay but God's anger was kindled because he went hmm. and the angel of the Lord took his stand in the way as his adversary now he was riding on the donkey and his two servants were with him and the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the road with a drawn sword in his hand. And the donkey turned turned aside out of the road and went into the field. And Balaam struck the donkey to turn her to the road. Then the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path between the vineyards with the wall on either side. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she pushed against the wall and pressed Balaam's foot against the wall. So, so he struck her again. Mean old guy, huh? Then the angel of the Lord went ahead and stood in a narrow place where there was no way to turn either to the right or to the left. When the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she lay under Balaam, and Balaam's anger was kindled, and he struck the donkey with his staff. And the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey. <laughs> right? And she said to Balaam, What have I done to you that you have struck me these three times? And Balaam said to the donkey, Because you have made a fool of me. I wish I had a sword with my hand, then I would kill you. <clears throat> and the donkey said to Balaam, Am I not your donkey on which you have ridden all your life long to this day? Is it my habit to treat you this way? And he said, No. Hmm. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand. And he bowed down and fell on his face. And the angel of the Lord said to him, Why have you struck your donkey these three times? Behold, I have come out to oppose you, because your way is perverse before me. The donkey saw me and turned aside before me these three times. If she had not turned aside from me, surely just now I would have killed you and let her live. <laughs> wow. Then Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I did not know that you stood in the road against me. Now, therefore, if it is evil in your sight, I will turn back. And the angel of the Lord said to Balaam, Go with the men, but speak only the word that I tell you to. So Balaam went on with the princes of Balak. Hmm. Interesting. When Balak heard that Balaam had come, he went out to meet him at the city of Moab on the border, formed by Armin and at the extremity of the border. And Balak said to Balaam, Did I not... Did I not send you to call you? Why did you not come to me? Am I not able to honor you? Balaam said to Balak, Behold, I have come to you. <clears throat> How have I now any power of my own to speak anything? The word the word that God puts in my mouth, that I must speak. Then Balaam went with Balak, and they came to Kiriath, Kuzoth, and wow. And Balaam sacrificed oxen and sheep and sent for Balaam and for the princes who were there with him. And in the morning, Balak took Balaam and brought him to the to the Bamoth Baal. And from there, he saw a fraction of the people. Bamoth Baal. That's interesting. And it kind of leaves us hanging, doesn't it? I'm kind of interested in this. The, the Book of Wars. Huh? The Book of Wars. Non-canonical book. The Book of Wars of the Lord is one of the several non-canonical books referenced in the Bible which have now been completely lost. From there, they set out and camped on the other side of it. Yeah. Huh. The Book of Wars is one of several non 
canonical books, canonical, am I saying that right? Books referenced in the Bible, which have now been completely lost. It is mentioned in Numbers 21, all right? Huh. That's interesting. A book that has been lost, the Book of Wars. <laughs> it's interesting. Oh. Well, so now they kind of left us hanging here. Shall we cheat and look ahead? It's not cheating to look ahead, but we'll look ahead anyways. See what's up for March 4th. Balaam's first oracle. Huh. Give me seven ounces of fire, seven bulls, and seven rounds. Balak did it. Balaam had said, and Balak. Hmm. Interesting. Balaam's second oracle. Yeah. Balaam's third oracle. Wow. Balaam's final oracle. <laughs> Man. Baal worship at Peor. Oh, wow. Well, it sounds like they're going to get in a lot of trouble. They're going to get in a lot of trouble, aren't they? Well, we'll find out. So, that's day 63 of Through the Bible in one year. Catch up on any you may have missed. You want to be the person who is saying, I went through the entire Bible in a year from cover to cover. So, there you have it. Give us a like if you think about it. Tell your friends. See you next time.